Hello there, my name is Ryan Clayton, and it truly is the most wonderful time of year for sports, that is. College basketball is in full swing, and it's time to take a look at the pros. NBA basketball will be returning on Tuesday, December 22nd with the Golden State Warriors at the Brooklyn Nets at 7 p.m. But before then, there is a lot to talk about, which my panel and I will be getting into. So, without further ado, this is Pirate TV's Hall Pro edition of the NBA season. Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is my name. I said in the intro is Ryan Clayton. Uh, I'm joined by uh, my panel. It's Ryan Henry, Ronald Castaneda, or Ronnie Castaneda, and Joel Moran. Uh, fellas, how are we doing? Again, excited, man. It's season is upon us. Happiest time of the year. Can't be any more happier. I'm feeling great. There's a lot of teams that made a lot of different off-season moves. I can't wait to talk about which ones are going to flop and which ones are going to potentially do good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of teams that are vying for the top. You know, it's not like a couple of years ago where you knew Warriors were going to be up there. You know, there's a mix of which teams are going to be good. You know, anything could happen. Really, anything can happen. Uh, so we've got a lot of topics to talk about. So the first one is going to be, we're going to start from the NBA draft. So NBA held their first uh, virtual draft on November 18th, where potentially the next greatest player may have been drafted. Um, <laughs> that being said, I think the general consensus was this draft class was a little bit weaker, but still has some quality players. Uh you know, we'll start with uh, we'll start with you, Ronnie. Uh, who are you looking forward to watching this season? So I really have been adamant about this one player, and it shocks me that he, you know, fell in a way. Because I like to say fell because if I was an NBA GM, I would take this guy number one overall. I'm sorry, I saw his game all throughout college, and I think he's just a mm -hmm. tremendous playmaker, a tremendous athlete. That man is Obi Toppin. So I loved his game, seeing him in Dayton. I saw him as like a prototype Blake Griffin, but with a better shot. So I was just really surprised at the fact that, you know, he wasn't projected to be, you know, top five. I understand, you know, the hype around Anthony Edwards and uh, James Wiseman and uh, LaMelo Ball. But I really think that Obi Toppin has it all. He has the experience. He has, you know, the body. He has the physicality to be a great player in this league. So Obi Toppin is definitely someone who I'm not just excited to watch this year for the Knicks. I'm going to be excited to see how he pans out in his entire career because I think he's a freak athlete with a tremendous future ahead of him. What about you, Ryan? Who do you like? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of players I like in the draft, but I mean, obviously, I think the player that's going to be most exciting to watch day one has to be LaMelo Ball. You know, he's been getting, garnering hype since his freshman year of high school. You know, we're finally seeing him in the NBA. He already looks in the preseason as one of the better passers in the NBA. You know, the intention he'll just gain, you know, he'll be the number, he'll be the guy there in Charlotte. So, you know, I'm excited to see what he can do at the next level. All right, very good. And uh, how about you, Joel? So before I get into my pick, I love those two picks. LaMelo brings Buzz to Charlotte, and I'm excited for O because I'm a Knicks fan. My pick is going to be a shocker. My pick is somebody who everybody went crazy about when he got drafted this high in the draft. That player is Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams is going to be a star. Le Leonard Hamilton produces pros. You look at Malik Beasley, Dwayne Bacon, um, Devin, Devin Vassell looks really good. I think Patrick Williams is not only going to be a great defender, but I think his offense is further along than people are giving him credit for. it. So we are going to move on to the format and some COVID-related things for uh, the season. So COVID is still in full swing, unfortunately. Uh, the second wave is upon us. Um, you know, do you think the teams, the NBA teams are going to be playing outside of a bubble? Uh, most of them in their home arenas. Uh, let's go Tampa Bay, Toronto uh, Raptors. But, um, you know, do you think something outside of it would be bubbled, could be pulled off? You know, are there going to be problems? Uh, what do you guys really think is going to happen with teams playing outside of the bubble? I'm not too concerned with it this season. Uh, last year, I would have been way more concerned. But we see right now they're starting to release the vaccines to people. 
and it's going to start being available. So I don't, I, I think, you know, if everything goes as planned, which the world is an unknown, unknown, so we really don't know, but if everything goes as planned, if you will get these vaccines, I think the season will be fine. And most importantly, people will be fine. Yeah, I gotta agree. I think that I wouldn't be super concerned. I think there's obviously going to be, you know, a couple players obviously missing games due to it, but, you know, as Joel said, you know, vaccines starting to roll out, you know, people should be getting access to it more. But also, I think the NBA is just proven compared to, like, especially the MLB and the NFL, that they've handled COVID better. You know, I trust Adam Silver and his management of the situation more than I trust Rob Banfriend of the MLB and um, Roger Goodell of the NFL. So I don't think there'll be any team outbreaks like we've seen in the, those two sports. But, you know, and with obviously the momentum of, you know, the vaccine's starting to roll out. So hopefully it won't spread as much. But I, I wouldn't be super concerned. Obviously, players are going to get it, but you know, I wouldn't expect a huge team outbreak. Uh, see, I kind of think it'll this will fall in the same realm as you know what has happened throughout the NFL this season. So uh, obviously, the NFL has had you know both minor and major outbreaks within teams, and I think that's kind of inevitable with everything we're seeing. Obviously, Joel, like you mentioned, the vaccine is coming out, but it is going to take a while before you know they give it out to the public unless you know they deem you know sports a priority thing and they give it out to all the athletes which i don't know if that'll happen but obviously i think there's you know so many question marks and uh, so many fears when it comes to that but uh, i think we just have to prepare for the inevitable in the fact that you know there is going to be you know parts of the season where teams are going to have to take two week periods off just because you know someone was exposed to COVID 19 and everything like that. So, uh, but I do trust the NBA and I do believe they are smart enough to, you know, plan around that, figure out what they have to do to make sure, you know, whatever team uh, that got, you know, infected can go on and continue their season and just making sure that this season doesn't come to an abrupt halt like we saw at the end of last season. So I think we just have to prepare for everything at this point. Yeah, so for the most part this season, fans are, as of now, uh, fans are, most likely are uh, for most teams not going to be in attendance. There is three teams, however, who are going to have fans in attendance. That would be the Atlanta Hawks, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Utah Jazz. Uh, you know, everything I've seen report wise, it's only going to be about 1,500 fans in attendance. Um, decent amount of questions around this. I mean, are you okay with this? Are you concerned? Um, yeah, what do you think? Do you think at some point the NBA could come in and possibly put a stop to this if it proves to be unsuccessful? Uh, what are your thoughts about these three teams having fans in attendance? See, I, I'm on the I'm on the team of you shouldn't be concerned about something until something happens to make you concerned about it. So right now they're having fans. If there's an outbreak, if people get COVID, one of the players or coaches or whoever it may be, then you start being concerned and then you shut down having fans at games. But if they're limiting the capacity and nothing is happening, people aren't getting sick, there is no outbreaks, then I think we shouldn't be concerned about it. I'm going to agree with that. And I don't see, I'm so like happy with how the NBA handled the bubble last season that, you know, I'm just so surprised. I think Adam Silver did a great job. But I am kind of surprised that they don't have a backup plan. You know, like, I feel like it wouldn't have hurt if they, you know, created another bubble where, like, a go-to thing if they see that it starts getting out of control once again. But, listen, I trust in the NBA. I saw, you know, a lot of uh, Matisse Thibel's vlogs when he was in the bubble. You know, what the NBA did to make sure the players were safe was tremendous, and I'm going to assume it will be nothing short of that this season. But uh, I think uh, Joel brought up a good point. You know, you shouldn't be scared until, you know, there's a reason for you to be scared. And I think the NBA has shown us enough that, you know, they can handle this situation. And, Ronnie, I kind of want to go on your point about saying they should throw a backup plan. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I assume it would probably cross that, but it's just like, from what I heard with them trying to play in the bubble in Orlando, they probably just didn't have the time and or resources to say, hey, if this top happens, we can just automatically go there. That's what I'm thinking. They, like, maybe explore that option, but they're, like, you know, the efforts we have to do, especially the timing they had, because they essentially had, like, 
what, like a two, three months turnaround, if that. So I don't think they, in between last season and this season. So I think they probably thought of it, but they probably just like realized they didn't have the resources or the time to fully plan it out. Um, let's get to some scheduling stuff. Uh, the, as I mentioned in my little intro, the season opener is December 22nd, uh, starts with the Warriors at the Nets, followed by, uh, that's going to be at 7 p.m., followed by the Lakers and the Clippers at 10. Um, of course, with that first matchup, you have, uh, KD's most recent team, uh, minus, you know, outside of the Nets, uh, first in each other, uh, you know, KD's return to uh, games that will count and stuff. Uh, you have a new look Warriors in a sense, you know, without Clay Thompson, but a healthy uh, uh, Curry with James Wiseman, uh, followed by Battle for LA at 10, uh, Lakers and Clippers. So how do you feel about these matchups? Uh, and what are some keys to the victories for, you know, all the teams? What do they have to do to get a win on opening night? I think this is a great opening slate for the NBA. You know, I'm a Nets fan. Um, Joel's kind of exposed me on that already. So I'm really excited to see KD playing games that matter again. I saw him in the preseason. He looks, you know, good as new. And he's playing against his former team. So may maybe there might be bad blood there. But, hey, they're coming to Brooklyn. So they're going to have to get ready for that. So, yeah, I'm going to pick the Nets over uh, the Warriors. But. I don't want people to sleep on the Warriors. I think their pickup of Kelly Oubre was great. Uh, obviously, it sucks that they lose uh, Clay Thompson for two straight years. You know, all praise to him because I can't imagine what it's like to, you know, miss two seasons of, you know, within such a young career. And I think uh, Kelly Oubre is good enough to kind of fit the mold in a way because, you know, he's still a great uh, shooter or can be a great shooter. And he knows how to slash to the basket. So I think he can fit, you know, the the California vibes very well. But I think the Nets are going to take that one. And I don't really have to say much about the next game. Like I said earlier, Clippers took a backseat to L.A. in their free agency move. So I think L.A. is going to put on – the Lakers, that is, are going to put – is it going to put on a show against the Clippers? Yeah. Uh, me for uh, – uh, oh, sorry to cut you off, Ryan. No, nah, you go, Joel. Yeah. For me, I think the Warriors and the Nets is a great game. I wish it was on Christmas. I don't like the Nets and Celtics game that much. I wish that game was on Christmas. But needless to say, I think the key for victory for both teams is for the Warriors, is Steph going to get hot? You you need Steph to get hot. We've seen him score in bunches in, in a short amount of time. So if Steph gets hot, they can take that game. But for the Nets, I think their depth is just way too much. KD, Kyrie. Um, DeAndre Jordan, Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, Joe Harris, Landry Shamit. I mean, these guys have a bunch of players and an underrated acquisition was Jeff Green, Uncle Jeff. He was great for the Rockets last season and he'll be great for the Nets this season. I think the Nets will win that game. And I think for the next game, the Clippers still don't have somebody to guard Anthony Davis. So I think the Lakers will win that game as well. Uh, yeah, so I, I have for Warriors Nets, I have the Nets winning because I think what it comes down to, the Warriors really don't have that guy who can, you know, take in Clay's spot as terms of scoring. You know, you're going to be wondering who's the offense going to be coming from. Maybe it's going to be Kelly Oubre, but I think the Warriors are going to really struggle generating offense from anyone not named Steph Curry. And you said the Nets just have a lot of depth. You know, they have, they have the offensive firepower to even exceed the Warriors with Obviously, Katie, Kyrie, Karis, LaVert, Spencer, Dinwiddie. So they're going to be – I just don't think the Warriors will be able to keep up with their offense. So I think that's take that game. And Clippers and Lakers, um, I think it's going to be a close game because that matchup told us anything last year that they always played each other well. I know the Clippers have struggled recently, but I think it just comes down to, you know, are they going to be able to contain LeBron and AD, which – it's kind of it's very hard to contain them, but I mean they have done it and they did do it last year. It's gonna be close, but Lakers will win. Lakers have all the momentum going for them. So moving on then to Christmas games, uh, we do have to wrap it up for this uh, segment. So I just want to know very quickly uh, which matchup are you looking forward to the most on Christmas Day? I don't want to be a homer and say you know Nets Celtics because you know 
whatever that is. I would have liked to see the Nets play a different team. But listen, I think a lot of people sleep on the Celtics. They're still, you know, in my opinion, I think they're still top dog in the East, despite everything the Nets have done. So we're going to have to wait out for that. But I'm really excited to be Mavs and Lakers because we're going to look back on that game and see the two MVP front runners going back and forth against each other. That's all I got to say about that. The game I'm most excited for is the Nuggets versus Clippers, a rematch of the divisional round in the Western Conference. We've seen the Nuggets come back and they beat them. They got hot. The Clippers are looking for revenge. They're looking for blood early. Jermichael Green leaves the Clippers, joins the Nuggets because he loved their passing in that series. And I'm expecting the Nuggets to win. I'm expecting Jamal Murray to have a big game. And I'm expecting Jamal Murray to elevate into an all-star player this upcoming season as well. Yeah, I think most biggest games got to be that Clippers-Nuggets game because I think that's really going to be a test of how this Clippers team will go out throughout the entire season. If they can get a, a key win in a rematch against the Nuggets in that Western Conference semi-series, they can get a big win that I think will help them move along better. They'll have a better season. But if they lose, especially them and the Nuggets, two big losses early on, it can be a trend for the whole entire season. So we are going to, uh, you know, this is the final segment. It is our longest one. It is the time uh, for season predictions. Now, it, for a lot of these, it is way too early to predict. But, hey, if uh, you say something right, man, you can look like a genius or a fool. It's time for the uh, boys to become men and the men to become boys with this segment. So uh, I'm going I'm going to be going over a lot of season predictions. Um, you know, I've asked some questions uh, and I'll ask you guys to respond. Uh, first one being a uh, team who wins more than expected. Who do you guys think wins more than expected? So for a lot of these, for a lot of these subtopics, I have like two teams. So, for, so for this one, I have two, the golden state warriors, and I think people are really sleeping on Steph like he's a, like he's not a two time MVP. The Golden State Warriors and in the East, the Washington Wizards. Look out for the Washington Wizards in the East. Hey, Joel, I'll see on my thunder. I was going to say the Wizards, you know, I saw they had them listed at 32 and a half wins, which is under 500. I mean, they should be getting healthy. Bradley Beal should be back. You know, they got Russ, who I think is an upgrade from John Wall. Thomas Bryant and Rui should both improve. And Denny, who slid to them in the draft, should be a, should have a qu- good rookie season for them. I'm going to go out and, you know, be different with my pick. I'm going to say the Celtics. I've been seeing so much, you know, slander on the Celtics. You know, like they're not, you know, such a high caliber Eastern Conference team. And yeah, you know, I know some other Eastern Conference teams like the Nets have made some great moves. But listen, the Celtics, they're going to be battling out for that number one seed in the East. And no matter how good every other Eastern Conference team is, the Celtics, man, really, they they got put, they got to have some respect on their name, considering everything they've done, especially with Jaden Tate, with excuse me, Jason Tatum, and everything he's done. So, listen, the Celtics are gonna surprise a lot of people in a weird way, but listen, they're gonna be contending for the title. I have the Grizzlies. This might be a hot or cold take, but I have them safely making the playoffs in the West, which like is never a guarantee. But uh, I have confidence in the Grizzlies this season. Uh, so for next up, a <laughs> in the similar realm, but the opposite, who is a team that loses more than expected? A team that's going to lose more than expected is the Atlanta Hawks. I know that they made a bunch of offseason moves but it's not going to matter because defense is still going to be their weakness. Like Trey Young, yes, he put up great numbers, 29 and 10, basically. But the problem with Trey Young is that he's really bad defensively. He's going to get hunted. He doesn't have the size that Curry has. Curry can kind of hide it a little bit. There are quite a few point guards I take before I take Trey Young. For example, John Moran. I take John Moran over I, before I take Trey Young, in my opinion. I take him over, I take Trey Young. I think the Atlanta Hawks made a lot of offseason moves, but they also stunted the development of a lot of their, their younger players like Cam Reddish, who I think has star potential, but is not going to get a lot of shine because Danilo and Bogdanovich and Hunter are going to be over him. If I had to pick a team that I think is going to finish worse than people expected, I think it's the Indiana Pacers. They've had this sort of like downhill trajectory ever since they got old deep and had that magical run back in 2018, you know. If you look at the rest of the Eastern Conference, every other team really who is at the top or is going to be fighting for their spots has just got better. And 
the Pacers really didn't, you know. Oladipo, he still has the injury concerns. How good is he going to be? He might even be moved because his contract's up, you know. There's also the question of how good is Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis? You know, they're both, you know, they're both four or both big men who we've seen, you know, aren't the greatest complimentary. They always do better when one's not healthy. So, you know, a lot of teams improved. The Pacers really didn't. Pick the Miami Heat here. Yeah, I know they're coming off of finals appearance, but I think it's safe to say that that team was, you know, ma- had a little bit of magic to them. Don't get me wrong, still a great team. Uh, I think the acquisition of Andre Iguodala was great, you know, in terms of, you know, leadership. They him out of bio. They just signed him to the Supermax. And uh, Jimmy Butler, I think he finally showed people that he is, you know, one of the best players in the league. So, yeah, they still have a great team, but I don't think, like, they're capable of – not that they're not capable of going to the finals once again, but I don't think they might have as great of a season as – you know, a lot of people are expecting. Yeah, I think they'll make the playoffs no problem, but I don't think they'll go as far as we saw them do last season. All right, so we are going to go uh, rapid fire for these next couple of questions. Uh, so what I got is uh, first time All Star. Who do you guys got? Zion or Jamal Murray? Book it. Ooh, okay. Jalen Brown. <laughs> oh, Jalen Brown. I, I got two here. I'll pick John Morant and Karis LeVert. Ooh, interesting Karis LeVert pick. Okay. Um, I I went with a very long shot. I said Van Fleet. Um, I think he puts up good numbers this year. Uh, defensive player of the year, who do we got? Bam Adebayo, just because it's nearly impossible to win an award when you play with LeBron James. If, if AD was on a different team, I'd pick AD, but I think it would be Bam Adebayo. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Anthony Davis. You know, I think he's shown that he's – one of the better defensive players in the past since he's gotten the league in 2012. I think it's just his year to win it. I'll, I'll pick Anthony Davis as well. I went Davis as well, so maybe Joel knows something that we don't. I do like the Bam pick, though. Uh, so rookie of the year, who do we think is going to win it? I think it's going to be James Wiseman. He's in the perfect position to succeed with the Golden State Warriors. He's going to get a lot of garbage buckets, you know, lobs and easy buckets because he plays with Steph. So I think it'll be James Wiseman. I'll pick Obi Toppin here. I think, like I said, he's a freak talent. So, and he's playing for the Knicks. So there's not much, you know, star power taken away from, you know, his attention. Melo Ball, he's the pseudo number one option in Charlotte. He's going to get, he's going to have all the highlights posted, the great passes. I think he's going to be, he's already come to the league as one of the best playmakers, you know, going to be number one guy there. I think he's going to thrive. The best chances are either LaMelo or Obi Toppin. Uh, this is an interesting one because I believe Ronnie kind of uh, alluded to it, but who do we think's winning MVP this year? Luka Doncic is winning the MVP this year. Listen, unless, you know, Gian- Giannis averages like 50, 20, and 20, he's not going to win MVP for a third straight year. So I do like Luka. But I, I'll take my chances with LeBron becoming the oldest MVP in NBA history this season. I'll go with a bit of a dark horse candidate. Uh, I'll go with Nikola Jokic. That is a different one, but I think it's fair. Uh, I had Luka as well. I think he's got the best chance, but we'll have to see. All right, so we're finishing it up with uh, the both Eastern and Western Finals matchups. Uh so, who do you think is going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals and who uh, comes out of the East? So, for the Eastern Conference Finals, I think it'll be the Nets versus the Celtics. And I think the Nets will come out of that series and go to the finals. Yeah, I got the Nets taking out the Celtics in six. I have the Bucks over the Heat in seven. I think Yas is finally going to reach the finals. Oof, okay, that would be an interesting matchup. Uh, I'm glad someone went with something different because I had Celtics next Nets as well. Uh, I have the Celtics winning, though. I think they finally get over the hump this year. We'll have to see. Uh, Western Finals matchup, uh, who do we got? Lakers versus Clippers, going with the pick that was supposed to be last year, and I think the Lakers win this one as well. I'll go Lakers, Mavs. I think Luka is going to be able to do it. He's not going to be able to bring him to the finals. I have the Lakers winning in six, but I think Luke is going to be good enough to get him to the conference finals. I have Lakers over Nuggets again. Uh, I just don't think the 
I don't think the Nuggets have the talent or the defense to match LeBron and AD, but I think they'll find their way to make the Western Conference Finals again. The Lakers will beat them. The Ryan Ryan connection on this one. Uh, I have Lakers. Uh, you know, here's the thing with my pick, though. I have most likely, I think it'll be Lakers and Nuggets. But honestly, I could see, you know, it's going to be the Lakers. And then they could be versing either the Nuggets, the Warriors, maybe the Clippers. Um, but either way, I think it's Lakers out of the uh, West. Um, all right. So championship matchups. Who do we got? Who is going to be the champion this year? Sorry, Ronnie. It's going to be the Lakers. <laughs> you know, the Nets are not winning the championship this season. I don't know if they're going to win it with this duo of Katie and Kyrie. I think the Lakers, I think they got better from last year, and they were pretty dominant in their playoff run, and they managed to get better. I think the Lakers too, Pete. I might be, you know, a crazy Jets fan, but I'm more realistic when it comes to the Nets. So I got the Lakers taking out the Nets in the finals. I'm I'm also fully prepared for this KD Kyrie experiment to blow up in Brooklyn's face and not, you know, translate to any championships. I got the Lakers in uh, yeah, it's either five or six. I'm going to go with six. I think Brooklyn will take two games at home. Yeah, I got the Lakers over the Bucks. I mean, I think if there's a series next playoffs that Giannis really struggles, it's against this team, you know. I think you can add – you can throw a lot of defenders in his way. And also, you know, no team – I don't think their team has an an, their team doesn't have an answer for Anthony Davis. But I think Lakers win in six over the Bucs. I think LeBron wins finals MVP because – I think Joel mentioned this with Anthony Davis. They won't give they won't give a Finals MVP to Anthony Davis unless LeBron plays really badly or Anthony Davis is like plays like all time amazing. So for my matchup, uh, it's ESPN's biggest dream come true. I have a Lakers Celtics, a classic classic matchup, uh, but I do have the Lakers winning it. And that will do it here for uh, Pirate TV. Um, I would like to thank my wonderful panel, uh, especially uh, Ryan and Joel uh, for making their Hall Talk debut. So uh, congrats on that, guys. Very, very good job uh, with that. Um, let's see. What do we got? Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please feel free to give it a like. Subscribe if you want to. Uh, if you want to watch more Pirate TV content, uh, comment down below if you agreed or disagreed with anything we had to say. Uh, special thanks to our producer, Liam Plate and executive producer, Christian Gardner. Once again, this has been Ryan Clayton, Ryan Henry, Ronald Casaneda, Joel Moran for Pirate TV, signing off.